Hello, I'm Drew Keller and I'm doing a series of tutorials on Pi Presents 1.3. If you saw my previous tutorial for what's new in Pi Presents 1.3, you may have noticed these icons with the raspberry on them and wondered what those were. Uh, the billboard ones are what you get if you go to the main Pi Presents GitHub page, Ken T2's page and the raspberry icons for what you get if you go to my github page. Uh, one of the great things about open source software is you can make your own changes to the source code. If those changes are suitable you can go back and merge them back into the main project and then everyone can benefit. So here is Ken T2's uh, github page which is the main repository for Pi Presents. Um, and what I did was I what's called forked it. And you can see uh, here is Ken's changes. And then I forked it here and continued on with some of my own changes, which you can see on my GitHub page up here is Drew Keller instead of Ken T2. And you can see uh, I've got the Pi Presents 1.2 and 1.3 gapless. And most of these changes I did backport uh, to 1.2. Uh, you can download it from here as a zip, or you can use the wget command line or the git clone command. Uh, of course, you would have to change. Ken T2 here to Drew Keller. Uh, so what are these changes that I've done? The well, first one is not even visible, but it's uh, applying the command line. Uh, some of the options that are available on the presenter I applied to the editor. So you can specify the home folder and the profile. And that's a huge help for anybody who's opening the same profile uh, again and again, uh, like a developer. I, mean, I can open it dozens of times in one sitting. So I can just, you know, it's, I have this command, I hit up arrow to access it again, hit enter, and it'll open the window. So this is the new one that I've done, and I'll open the stock uh, version as well. And here we are opening the profile. This is lots of fun. Especially if you have to do it more than once. There we go. Uh, so the biggest visual difference here is where well, we got uh, the size in the window is different. You can see in this one it's bigger and we can resize it if we wanted to. Another thing is this remembers its position. So if we move it down here, close it, and then reopen it again, it'll reopen in the same position that it was. Another uh, big difference here visually is we see the shows list right here, and it's taking up all this space. So if we have a lot of shows, you can see more of them at once, whereas over here we have the shows and the media lists. So where are the media lists over here? Well, they're the tab. And if we select a show here, it automatically selects the, the correct show or the correct media list back in the background and subsequently the tracks that you're looking at apply to the show that you have selected. So you can select a show automatically updates tracks. Over here, you select a show, nothing changes for your tracks. You have to remember to select the correct media list in order to see the tracks for that media list. Now one thing that's flexible is here you can select the media list individually without the show moving around, but over here you can select the media list and it will move the show around, but, you know, keeping it synced is a lot bigger uh, 
feature that I use all the time. Uh, one of the differences that you don't really see, it's more of a background thing, is the original one is based on TT on TK controls and mine is based on the TTK which is a newer uh, newer type of control and they're based on an overall style instead of configuring each one individually and I find that the TTK behaviors are more consistent with other controls that I'm used to as well say on Windows I spent some time adding keyboard control as well. Um, well first of all uh, one of the things I do all the time is edit an item and now we can edit by double clicking instead of selecting and then clicking the edit button you just double click on something that applies for tracks or for shows Okay, so for the keyboard control, once we have a, when these open, I can hit escape here, and it's the same as clicking on the cancel button, or we can, I can hit enter, and it's the same as clicking OK and saving the changes. And of course, if you're in a multi line box, clicking or uh, hitting enter puts a new line instead of saving the changes. But if we're in a regular control, you hit enter and it closes it. Another thing that's accessible now with the keyboard is the menu. So if we hit Alt P, we open the profile menu. We hit Alt M, we get the media list menu. We hit Alt T, we get the track menu, you know, etc. You use the arrow keys to go to the side either side or up and down. You can see that the menus are organized slightly differently as well. The add options here are all in the same main menu instead of over here they are a cascaded menu. And this uh, track menu, the same menu is accessible down here we have a track selected and right click on it. You get the same menu there. Or if you click in on blank space, you just get the add portion of that menu. And if you uh, press Shift Plus, you also get the add menu. You can delete a track by simply hitting the delete key instead of having to go up to the track menu and click delete. There's also a delete button here on the side, but you know, most of the time I hit the delete key on the keyboard. Another thing I did was try to make messages like this more user friendly. This one it is actually telling me which track it thinks it wants me to, or which track it thinks I want to delete instead of me having to guess from it. Say if we go over here and hit delete, uh, delete. It doesn't tell me what track. I have to look, actually look and see, okay, it's this red one. Uh, <clears throat> another change is the validation. You see this message down here, click here to validate. Uh, we're kind of going uh, long on this tutorial, so I think I'll save that one for the next tutorial. Stay tuned.